Hello, welcome to Neil Scribe. Two things I want to see before I die is that Seattle Mariners win the World Series and I see a human finally walk on Mars. That's why I was so pumped last year when I heard that SpaceX was in the running for government funding for the BFR because that would mean that the development would be completed that much sooner. Because as it stands now, SpaceX is only spending around 5% of its resources to the development of the BFR, which is estimated to be around $5 billion, so I would like to see them get help anywhere they can. So last year, the U.S. Air Force issued a request for proposal for a launch services agreement for the funding of three commercial launch vehicles in order to replace the Atlas V rocket, which uses the Russian-manufactured RD-180 engine. There were at least four companies competing for funding, including SpaceX for the BFR, the ULA for their Vulcan Centaur rocket, Blue Origin for their New Glenn rocket, and Orbital ATK which was recently acquired by Northrop Grumman and their Omega rocket. Quick comparison, SpaceX BFR will be a fully reusable rocket, standing 118 meters tall, and will produce over 61 meganewtons of thrust, with a payload capacity to low Earth orbit of over 100,000 kilograms. Again, this is fully reusable. ULA's Vulcan will be a partly reusable two-stage rocket, standing 58 meters tall. It will produce around 4.9 meganewtons of thrust, with a payload capacity to low Earth orbit of 25,000 kilograms. Blue Origin's New Glenn will be a reusable two- or three-stage rocket standing 99 meters tall. It will produce over 17 meganewtons of thrust with a payload capacity to low Earth orbit of 45,000 kilograms. And Northrop Grumman's Omega rocket, inherited from orbital ATK, will be an expandable three-stage rocket, 60 meters tall. I couldn't find any thrust specs, but it will have a payload capacity to low Earth orbit around 16 to 20,000 kilograms. Personally, I was rooting for SpaceX, of course, along with Blue Origin, because I'm excited for Jeff Bezos' plan to start a cargo delivery service to the moon. But the ULA Vulcan actually has a few things that I'm legitimately excited to see. First is that the upper stage will use cryogenic oxygen and hydrogen fuel, which is more resilient in space. The idea behind this is, instead of turning into space junk, with the use of cryogenic fuels, the upper stage will be refuelable, and it will remain in orbit, and will be able to be used for additional missions such as launching research spacecraft from low Earth orbit into deep space. I think that's pretty cool. And second, the ULA plans to come up with a way to recover the engine of the first stage, which will save two-thirds of the cost of the booster. And the plan is to have the engine detached from the booster in space, and an inflatable aeroshell will protect the engine's re-entry into the atmosphere, and a parachute will engage and slow the engine down until a helicopter snags it from the sky and safely land it to the ground. And I really like the idea of the reusable second stage, and I think it's nice to finally see ULA take steps towards innovation. Northrop Grumman's Omega, on the other hand, isn't taking any steps towards reusability. When I found this out last year, I was disappointed in Orbital ATK because they're missing an opportunity to take a step towards reusability, and I thought for sure that they would not get selected. But I was wrong. The Air Force announced the winners earlier this month, and Northrop Grumman was one of the winners, receiving $792 million for the initial development of the Omega rocket. The other two winners were Blue Origin receiving $500 million and $967 million for the ULA. And unfortunately, this leaves SpaceX empty-handed. You see, the Air Force's strategy is to bring new competitors into the market, and SpaceX already has the Falcon Heavy, so funding the BFR doesn't fit this strategy. Anyway, I have no doubt SpaceX will find a way to fund the BFR, but I was hoping they could get some extra help. SpaceX did not disclose how much it's receiving from Yusaku Mizawa, but I hope it's at least enough money to reach the short hop stage of the development, which is slated for next year. One last thing, earlier this year, SpaceX sold 3 million shares of the company and raised $500 million to fund various projects. And I can see SpaceX raising more money this way in order to fund the BFR in the coming years. So there's so much to look forward to and hopefully we will see the short hop test in 2019. As for the Seattle Mariners on the other hand, that's a whole nother story. Alright, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neil Scribe, and I'll see you on the next journey.